isn't that just such a powerful message exploring all of the differences between when we can help fix or even serve others? Our reading this morning actually has a bit of a backstory to it. Uh, when I was an undergraduate at CSU Monterey Bay in California, part of our education across all the different majors included a unit on what we called service learning. This program was based on this radical idea that learning itself also takes place outside of the classroom. In the wider world, service provides a unique way of learning that goes way beyond just tests or books. In service learning in my freshman year, I encountered Remen's words and was immediately struck by how powerfully they name several important things about service. First, the readings name the separate ways that we tend to see the world and others around us through how we feel compelled to either help, fix, or serve. It talks about our tendency, tendencies to see others in ways that differentiate them from ourselves seeing others or the issues facing them as implicitly weak or broken. This itself is a powerful revelation that asks us to examine our own impulses, to ask whether we are truly seeing others as equals, rather than assuming that others need our help and feedback that only we ourselves can give. And second, this reading names the connective nature of service itself, how true service and serving one another eliminates a dynamic of power and hierarchy. It names how the very nature of life itself is sacred and that we are all connected in this web of interconnection, something that sounds very seventh principle to us. Service connects us in the joy and pain found in others, in a way that where we can also share in the joy and suffering found within ourselves. In fact, service depends on this sharing. Lastly, and though perhaps most importantly, this reading highlights how true service is not just a relationship between yourself and others. It's also a deeper engagement and connection with your own authentic self. In order to serve, we must also be willing to bring our whole selves with us. To revisit a line that Margaret read so beautifully for us, when you serve, you see life as whole. Fixing and helping may be the work of the ego and service the work of the soul. These three revelations about service, how we can see life and others so differently, how we are inexplicably and inevitably connected with one another, and how we must also bring our own self alongside our own want and willingness to serve others. These are all truths that I've personally experienced firsthand in many different times and moments in my ministry. Though one particularly powerful moment stands out above others. Back when I was a chaplain at a program called Believe in Success, a support program for survivors of domestic violence, I continued to reflect on the echoes of my service as a minister entering this program. This reading seemed to follow me from my time in college, you know, repeating over and over again in the back of my mind as I came face to face again with these three important truths about service. To start, this was my, was my first formal ministry position that I served in, starting in my first semester of divinity school. While I had been preparing for ministry for a long time, this was the first time that I felt myself wearing the mantles of both minister and chaplain. And to make things even more complex, the program itself was made up of primarily women of color who were healing and growing from their experiences of domestic violence and abuse. Walking into that space as a cisgender white male, I was acutely aware of the delicate nature of my position as their chaplain. Many of these women did not trust me, at least at first. They, they had experiences with men in their lives that told them that I was dangerous. The layers and barriers of race, as well as the dynamic of my being a religious professional also made this more complicated. 
Several of the women had firsthand experiences of clergy and religious communities as being sources of pain and even alienation during their abuse. Immediately, I was confronted with that first truth about service, that if I approached this community of survivors with any pity or sense of brokenness or helplessness, I would not earn their trust. More importantly, if I let my own ego serve the ways that I have been socialized in our society as a white male to be heard and trusted automatically, to have my voice be taken for granted, rather than approaching them with humility and a willingness to listen, our pastoral relationship would be over within that very same day. Yet against these odds, I continued to journey with these women as they made sense of their pasts and grew in confidence toward a brighter future. One story illustrates this meeting place of these other two truths about authentic service. At one point in the program, after several weeks of meetings and getting to know these women, one woman, a devout Southern Baptist, approached me and asked me if I would hold with her a Bible study. Though not a text we Unitarian Universalist ministers spend a lot of time on in seminary, I heard in her request a request to grow closer and deeper with her own sense of faith. And as her chaplain, we developed a closer bond as we explored the Bible, and she was able to reconnect with her own Christian identity. Inevitably, there came a point where she realized there was more to me than just my ministry. In past times, this woman had been vocal about her discomfort with LGBTQ plus people in our sessions. And while we had to speak with her and emphasize over and over again that all people were welcome in our program, and that this type of speech would not be allowed within our UU values, and that all these things I harbored in essence a sort of discomfort and a bit of a secret with my own identity. Against all the odds, I was a gay minister doing regular Bible study with a King James Version Southern Baptist woman who wanted nothing to do with queer or trans people. Ministry sure puts you in some interesting places in your life. <laughs> and for a while, I decided that my pastoral connection with her didn't need me to really reveal this about myself. She was comfortable with approaching me as her minister, even though she didn't know that part of my identity was lying just right beneath the surface. I decided that I wouldn't lead with my queerness as her minister, but that I also wouldn't lie about who I was. If it came up, I would be true to myself in ministry in all of who I was, just as much as I was showing up fully as I could for her. And do you know what the amazing thing was? When my secret was finally revealed, someone else in the program had asked me about my identity and I had mentioned that in Unitarian Universalism, we celebrate ministers that are queer and trans. I saw an incredible, incredible glimpse of authentic connection. This woman by this point knew me. I was her minister and she loved me. But likewise, I also knew and loved her. My own stereotypes and preconceived ideas of Christianity and who I thought she was, was also challenged. We met one another there, where each of us saw one another as an equal. And my sexuality was no longer a factor that determined whether she could love me or support me as her minister. The mutual connection we had built through service, as well as my own willingness to bring my full authentic self to the table, led to a place of both transformation and spiritual growth for both of us. And how could it be any different after we had shared so much honesty and vulnerability in this program? While this was perhaps a bit of a longer story that I, I usually don't go this long on Sunday mornings with my stories, for me, it illustrates a time that I served and lived into an authentic relationship with another person especially someone who was quite different from myself. It highlights the reading and how we here at UUCGT might think about developing real authentic and sustained connections and relationships with others in our community, even if this feels impossible, challenging, or even daunting. 
You see, when we serve, we serve with all parts of ourselves, our woundedness, our limitations, our varied experiences, and yes, our own identities. Through serving in this way, we start to see wholeness found within ourselves and others. At UUCGT, if we are serious about wanting to be more of an authentic and connective presence in this community, we must also be willing to ask ourselves how it is that we are showing up in this desire to serve. Are we truly understanding our position with other communities as organizations and positions of equals? Are we attempting to serve a real need found in our community? Or are we desiring a boost of our own organizational ego, a sense of who we think we are and who we imagine ourselves to be in this wider community, rather than what it is that others might actually need from us? How can we enable the wholeness found in ourselves to serve also the wholeness found in others? We are given an opportunity to ask ourselves this question as we start to grow our awareness and attentiveness to the issues facing our communities. And in this time of our imagined, imagining of our shared ministry together, we are able to really think about what it means to minister in this sense of authenticity, to show up as we are and also how and where our showing up meets the rest of the world. We are given a real invitation to dig deep within ourselves and our lived experiences to understand where it is within us that this impulse to serve generates. And through service, through living out this renewing and revitalizing commitment to ourselves and others, we can learn more about ourselves in the process and grow even further to who we are and what we believe. In our story about the fixer that Claire read for us, one of our wonderful RE teachers, I'm sure many of you found a sense of being able to relate. It really speaks to how we see authentic living moving beyond just helping and fixing. The fixer who could fix any problem and knew every solution saw a whole world in need for her help. And though this help wasn't on the terms of those being helped, instead it really was on her terms the issues and problems that she noticed and saw in the world around her. In fact, her fixes actually did more harm than good, as her neighbor who is brought to tears reveals how her fixes actually brought him more pain than help. In the end, the neighbor and the fixer reach a meeting point of their souls. The neighbor shares with her the specialness of his memory, with the creak in the floorboards and his late husband, just as the fixer realized that she had it all wrong. And after all of it, they work together to bring back the squeaking board to get that squeak just right, an act that connects both of them in one common purpose, in one sense of service. And through this, the fixer and the neighbor could live authentically with who they were, while also developing a relationship on the neighbor's terms, rather than just the fixers. In Northwest Michigan, this season of pride invites all of us to live into authenticity. It's also the Soul Matters Month of uh, our cultivating relationships. Many of us celebrate pride as it comes each year with that same repeated message year after year, the message of be who you are and you are loved just as you are. While this message is still so, so incredibly important, I wonder if we can share a new message this year. One that says, who I am and who you are is sacred, and the person I am is so eager to meet you right where you are. You are loved but beyond belief, and we want to make things better with you in mind. Dear ones, this Saturday, many of us from UUCGT will be gathering at F&M Park for the Up North Pride Picnic, as well as the visibility march happening later that day down Front Street at 5.30 p.m. This year, I invite you to show up for this affirmation of love and inclusion in our community. I invite you to show up living your Unitarian Universalist values, holding also that crowds and gatherings are still something that feel unsafe for some of us. Join myself and others from UU in bringing your whole self to this incredible celebration. 
And while simply attending one march or pride celebration is still a ways out from authentic sustained connections, let's open the door with this for this new meeting point of ourselves and our wider community. Come this weekend just as you are, fully as you are, in all that you are. The soul in you is yearning to be an authentic living community with the souls of others. Let's go show up and bear witness to those who could use a little more love and affirmation in their lives, not on our terms, but on theirs. We mustn't forget that as a religious community, our affirmation of the inherent worth and dignity of both queer and trans lives still matters, especially in our own area. Dear ones, I know that we have what it takes to imagine living authentically in our community. We are entering a season of incredible opportunity and transformation together. So let's go do it. May it be so, and amen.